Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you my favorite top 15 tips and tricks in Google Chrome. Now, if you're like most people, you probably spend most of your time on your PC in a web browser. These are going to make you even more efficient and productive. If you wanna jump around this video, feel free to use the timestamps down below in the description. All right, let's jump on the PC and let's see what these are. Tip number one, you can now create groups of tabs in Google Chrome. Now, previously you could organize your tabs however you wanted. You could simply click on a tab and you could drag it to a new position. But now you can create groups of tabs. To create a group, well, first off, you can select multiple tabs that you would like to include in a group. Here, for example, I'll press the shift key and I could select these first three tabs. Now, let's say I also want to include Twitter as part of this group. I can also press the control key and then click on this tab. I now have four tabs selected and I can right click on any one of these tabs to add it to a new group. This opens up a prompt over on the left hand side where I can name my group. Group. I'll go ahead and give it a name. This seems fitting since I'm just grouping together a whole bunch of random stuff. Down below, I could also select a color to more easily identify this group in the future. I'm gonna go with a nice common green. Down below, I have a few different actions that I could take. I could add a new tab to this group. I could also decide to break up the band and we can ungroup everything. I could also simply close the entire group or maybe I wanna elevate it to its own window. I could also move the group to a new window. Over here, if I wanna collapse the group, I can click on the title and that'll collapse all of those tabs. Once again, I can click on it again to expose all of the tabs. Let's say I wanna add some additional tabs in. Well, I could simply click on one of my tabs, drag it into the group, and now it becomes part of the group. If for whatever reason I don't want it in the group anymore, once again, I can remove it the same way. I could simply drag it out. Tip number two, I can now manage my audio and my video playback directly through Chrome. In the past, let's say I was playing a song in one of my tabs, maybe on Spotify or YouTube, and you wanted to go back and maybe jump to the next track, or maybe you wanted to pause or play again. You'd have to look across all of your different tabs, first off to identify which one is playing the music. Here you see a speaker icon indicating that it's coming from YouTube. Here, if I click on it, let's say I wanna pause a video, I'd have to click down on the controls here, and here I could play again. Now it's a lot easier. In the top right hand corner, I have a new icon to control my music and videos and more. When I click on this, here I could pause and here I could play. I could jump to the next track or I could jump to the last track. Also, let's say I want to jump to a different tab, but I want to keep watching the video. I can click on something called picture in picture. This launches the video into its own window and here now I could jump from tab to tab and I'll continue watching the video. Now let's say that you have multiple tabs that are generating sound. Maybe you're watching a show and then you're also listening to music. When you click on manage audio, here you'll see every single tab that's generating some type of sound and you have your controls associated with that source. This makes it a lot easier to manage your music and also your video playback. Tip number three, you can now pin tabs that you use frequently in Google Chrome. This will give you easy access in the future. Now, if you wanna follow along with this one, feel free. Over here, I have the Kevin Stratford YouTube page. It's a very fine YouTube channel. This is a channel that I come back to quite often. You can now right click on the tab and there's the option to pin the tab. When you pin the tab, it reduces the size of it, but it's now fixed on the left-hand side. So I could click into other tabs and here I'll always see my pinned tab over on the left hand side. Now if I go in and close Google Chrome, and here, if I open Google Chrome again, here I'll see that it automatically reloads my tab. So this gives me easy access again in the future. Tip number four, you can now mute different tabs so you no longer hear any sound from that tab. Now, here I'm on a website and I'm reading a news article, but they also have a video that just automatically starts playing and it really interrupts my reading experience. Here on my top tabs, I can see that this tab is generating some sound. I can now right click on this tab and I could go down and I can mute the site. This will turn off all the audio from this page. And finally, I can read my article in peace. Tip number five, you can now very easily send a tab from your PC to your phone. Maybe you're about to head out and you didn't get to finish what you were trying to do. For example, maybe you wanted to order some cookies from the Kevin Cookie Company and you've got to go, but you still wanna complete the purchase. Don't worry, you can very easily do that. To be able to pull this off, you need to have Chrome on both your PC and on your phone. Go up to your tab, right click on it, and there's an option to send to your phone. Let's click on that. 
Here now on my phone in Google Chrome, if I click on a new tab, I'll see a message at the top telling me that a new tab was received. When I click on open, here is the Kevin Cookie Company, and yes, I can now complete my order. Tip number six, you can have Chrome open a specific set of tabs every time you open Chrome. Here, for instance, I have all these tabs open, and when I open Chrome, I like to have these tabs open. Now, I could manually open them, or I could have Chrome do the heavy lifting for me. Let's go over to the top right-hand corner and click on the ellipsis, and within this menu, let's click on Settings. Within Settings, over on the left-hand side, let's click on the option that says On Startup. Here, we see a few different options for how Chrome should behave when we start it up. By default, it's set to open the new tab page. Here when I click on a new tab, this is the new tab page you could search and you could get back to frequently used websites. Back over here, I could also set it to continue where I left off. If I were to close my browser right now and reopen it, it would simply reopen every single tab that was open. But I want it to open a specific set of tabs every single time. That's the third option here. When I click on this, I I can go through and I could add pages that I want it to have open, or I could simply select all of my pages and open them in tabs, and then I could tell Chrome to use the current pages. When I click on this, here I'll see all of my different tabs. Here now, when I open Google Chrome again, you'll see that all of my tabs reload automatically. Tip number seven, you can use the Omni box in Google Chrome to not only search on Google or to type in URLs, but also to search other websites. To search search other websites, simply type in the website name. Here I typed in youtube.com. Over on the right hand side, you'll see this helpful hint that says to press tab to search YouTube video search. I'll click on tab and let's type in Kevin Stratford. Here I could type it in, hit enter, and this drops me in YouTube on the search page where I can see the search results. Now this isn't just limited to YouTube, you could use it with other sites as well. Like let's say Wikipedia or any other site that has search. Tip number eight, you can now install some of your favorite websites as web apps. Here's a website that I go to all the time called office.com, and I wanna install this so I could get back to it more easily. How do you install a website? Well, up here in the Omni box over on the far right hand side, there's a plus icon. When I click on this, I can install Office. This isn't just limited to Office, many other websites support this as well. Let's click on install. Once I install, this now opens up a web app on my computer. You'll also notice here on my desktop, it's added a desktop icon, so I could simply click on that to very easily navigate back to this web app much more quickly. Along with getting to it on my desktop, I can I could also add a taskbar shortcut and I could also find it in search on my computer. Let's say that I no longer want to have this web app on my computer, I could simply go up to the top bar, click on the ellipsis, and then here I can then uninstall the web app. Tip number nine, Chrome has its very own task manager where you can see how much CPU or memory all of your different tabs are taking. It's very similar to in Windows or on Mac where you have a task manager that'll tell you how much memory or CPU your different apps are consuming. To be able to access this, let's go up to the three dots or the ellipsis right up here in the top right hand corner. And within this menu, let's go down to the option that says more tools. Here within this menu, there's the option for the task manager. You can also access it by pressing shift and escape. This opens up the Chrome Task Manager, and here I could see all the different tasks that are currently active. I could see how much memory they're consuming, how much CPU, how much of my network, and I also see a process ID. Now, oftentimes if your computer, or maybe your browser feels like it's starting to slow down, don't blame it on Chrome. Instead, it's typically the fault of one of your tabs that you have open. Here, let's say maybe YouTube was acting up and it's consuming a lot of memory. I could simply select that task and then I I could go down to the bottom right hand corner and I can end that process. Oh snap, that just stopped it. Here you'll see now that that's cleaned up and opened up that memory and also the CPU and network that that tab might have been consuming. Tip number 10, you can use Google Chrome to cast to another Chromecast device. How do we do this? Well, let's say that I wanna broadcast out this website to my TV, which supports Chromecast. Here, I simply go up to the top right-hand corner, and once again, let's click on the ellipsis. When I click on this, I see an option that says cast. When I click on this, it'll look for devices that I can cast to, and once it finds them, then I could go ahead and cast this page. 
Tip number 11, you can use Chrome URLs to very quickly navigate throughout the Chrome experience. Well, how do we even know what these URLs are? Well, there's only one URL you have to remember. Simply type in Chrome colon forward slash forward slash and then type in Chrome dash URLs. When you hit enter, this will show you a list of all of the different Chrome URLs. And yes, there are quite a few of them that you have access to. I'll quickly show you some of my favorite ones and some of the more useful useful ones. Here, if you type in Chrome and then history, this will show you all of your search history without having to go through all of the different settings menus. Here, you could also very quickly get your settings by typing in settings. And here, if you type in downloads, this will show you all of your recent downloads. Chrome URLs make it pretty quick to get through the experience. Tip number 12, I can very easily move tabs around within my browser using the control and the shift keys. Let's say for example that I wanna move these three tabs somewhere else. I have the first tab selected and I'll press the shift key to highlight the first three. I can now grab this set of tabs and I can move it to the end. Let's say that maybe I just wanna move my YouTube page and the Kevin Cookie Company to the front. I'll use the control key when I click and that'll select these two tabs. I can now select these tabs and I can drag them to the front. So control and shift make it very easy to rearrange your tabs. Tip number 13 has to do with autofill. Autofill is probably one of the most helpful items that browsers have added. When you have to fill in your address, your email address, your phone number, autofill does that for you automatically. But sometimes maybe you move or you update your email address and you're stuck with all these old autofills. How do we update autofill? Well, up in the top right hand corner once again let's click on the ellipsis and here let's go down to settings within settings over on the left hand side there's an option for autofill let's click on that there are three different types of autofill you have passwords payment methods and also addresses i want to update my address so let's click on this option within addresses i can have it automatically autofill or i could turn it off altogether i could add additional addresses or i could go in and i could modify existing autofill values now i live at 321 main street not 123 let me click over here and then click into edit. Tip number 14, many websites these days prompt you if you want to show notifications. Notifications appear when you have your browser open and also when you don't have your browser open. If you feel like maybe you're overwhelmed by notifications, I'll show you how you could rein them in. For now, I'm going to allow the notification. To get control over your notifications, let's go over to the top right hand corner and click on the ellipsis. Here, let's go down to settings. Within settings, over on the left hand side, let's click on privacy and security and then click on site settings. Within site settings, I see all of my recent activity, including allowing notifications for this website. If I scroll down just a little bit under permissions, here I can manage all of my notifications. Let's click on this. Here within notifications, I can turn on or off the ability for sites to even ask me if I want to turn on notifications at all. There's also a new option called use quieter messaging. This is a little less disruptive when you're doing your work. Down below, I could review all the sites that I've blocked notifications from, and down below I can see all the sites that I've allowed. Now here down below, I really don't want to get many notifications, so instead I'm going to click on the ellipsis and I could simply go to block, and I won't see any more notifications from this site. Tip number 15, Chrome includes a whole bunch of different keyboard shortcuts that makes it even easier to get around Chrome. I've included a link in the description that gives a summary of all of the different shortcut keys. I want to show you some of my my favorites. Here I have a whole bunch of tabs open across the top. I can use the control key together with the number key to jump to different tabs. Here I see that the Kevin Cookie Company is my third tab. I could press control three and that'll jump to the third tab. Control two and I jump to the second tab. Also, let's say I simply want to move across my different tabs. I could use the control key together with the tab key to move right along all these different tabs. If I want to go back, I simply add the shift key so I could press control shift and tab and then I can move to the left along my tabs across the top if I want to open a new tab I could press control T and that opens a new tab I could also press control shift N and that opens up incognito mode those are some of my favorite shortcut keys and once again within that URL in the description you can review all of them 
Tip number 16, if you use Google Chrome as your password manager, you can also have Chrome notify you when any of your passwords have been compromised. Now, it feels like every other week in the news, you hear about some company having a data breach. Luckily, Chrome will stay on top of that for you. Let's go up to the top right-hand corner. Once again, let's click on the ellipsis and then let's go down to settings. Within settings over on the left hand side, there's an option called safety check. Let's click on that. Here we can run a safety check by clicking on check now. Let's click on that. This runs a safety check and here I see that I have 13 compromised passwords. So let's say that maybe a merchant or a retailer where I have a password with them, if it's been compromised, Chrome will tell me about that and I can go in and then update my password. It'll also tell me if I had a compromised password that I use elsewhere. It'll also advise me to change it at that other location. Tip number 17, and unfortunately, I know it's very sad. This is the last tip of today. Google Chrome now supports dark mode, especially as it's getting late. Your eyes might be hurting from this bright light emanating from your screen. To turn on dark mode, we don't set that within Chrome. Instead, we use the operating system that we're on to turn on dark mode. Here, I'm on Windows, so I could simply go down to search and let me type in dark mode. When I type in dark mode, this opens up settings with colors. Here I'll see that my default windows mode is set to dark and down below my default app mode is set to light. I wanna set this to dark. When I set it to dark, you'll notice now that Google Chrome automatically changes to dark theme. It basically inherits the setting from windows and then applies it to the browser. This is a lot easier on the eyes now. All right, well, those are all of my tips and tricks. If you learned some new ones, please give this video a thumbs Thumbs up to see more videos like this in the future hit that subscribe button if you want to see me cover any other topics on this channel leave a comment down below all right well that's all i had for you today i hope you enjoyed and as always i hope to see you next time bye